Welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. On today's episode, I need to confess, you know, that I used to be a very, very false prophet. I used to be deceived, and I deceived a lot of people. This is not easy to talk about, you guys, and uh, I need you to hear how absolutely wrong and unbiblical I was, and how awful and unbiblical and dangerous the charismatic church actually is. So are you ready? Let's go. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh no. Holy oh, Spirit, no. Oh, activate. No. Holy Spirit, activate. 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 Oh. All right, let's go. So according to this little song, we can summon the Holy Spirit to do what we want, when we want it, how we want it. <laughs> what? It's like the Holy Spirit's a genie or our personal servant or a bellhop. And sadly, that's what I used to do. I used to treat him that exact same way. See, for 25 years, I was trapped in the charismatic movement. And not only was I deceived a lot, but I deceived a lot of people. So I wanna share with you what happened and how that went about. First, it came through false visions. The whole God showed me. This happened a lot. Whatever popped into my head, you know, in the middle of the service, I'd run up to the microphone and say, you know, God, God showed me this. One time I remember, you know, I, I, I said, well, God showed me this big dumpster and we were just taking our, our problems and throwing it into the dumpster. <laughs> Does that sound like something God would say? Does that sound like anything biblical? No. Also, I'd get on, a, there was an app called Periscope on Twitter a number of years back and I would get on there and I would just, I would talk about what God showed me and my visions and all these different things and I'd have thousands upon thousands of people hanging on my every word. Oh, man of God, you are just prophesying. You are just speaking God's word. Was I really? Not at all. It was all about me. Now, did I get things right occasionally? Yes, I guess I did. But that doesn't mean I was of the Lord. Not at all. It was really what was all up in here, not what was in God's word. Number two, it came through false words of knowledge. The whole God wants you to know, or I got something to tell you. It was crazy. It made me look godly. Like I had something special that you didn't. I had a little extra, you know, inside scoop from God that I had to like let you know. And it pumped up people. Every time I shared a quote unquote word of knowledge with somebody, it was never about sin. It was never about, never about holiness or repentance. It was always about good news. Oh yes, come on. You're gonna get houses, you're gonna get cars. You're gonna get a car, you're gonna get a car, you're gonna get a car, you're gonna get a car. And you're gonna get breakthrough and you're gonna get you know prosperity, you know? I mean, I did that. I, I was sitting in a, in a car with a friend one time after going to dinner and I knew that he was dealing with something and I said, you know, God just wanted me to tell you that the girl you're dating, that's gonna be your wife and that you're, the job that you're wanting, you're gonna get that in the next two weeks. The guy started to cry and he was just overwhelmed and he was like, oh, God has heard my prayers. The problem is that never came true. He never got the job and the girl dumped him a month later because I was a false prophet who was not hearing from God. Number three, false prophecies. I call that, thus saith the Lord. And sadly, I use this way too many times. I should never have done it once, but I did it way too many times. The whole direct revelation, you know? God told me to tell you dot, 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 dot. You know, it's, it's literally, I've got this extra special access to God that you don't. It made me look like this mighty man of God. And I was a fraud, but they didn't know it because I said, you know what, God told me. And that's the, that's the part of the problem. You have to see this, that when you use the God told me card, you have insulated yourself against any criticism because how are people gonna know what God told you? They can't tell what you heard God say. And so most people go along with it. Oh, God told you that? Oh, wow, I better write that down. That's a good word. No, God didn't say it. It didn't come true. I was a liar, I was a fraud. And I'm embarrassed by that 
because a lot of people, tr they hung on every word that I said. They truly thought that God was speaking through me to them to give them fresh access and fresh revelation. And I was a liar. And that just, it's, it's, it breaks my heart today that I went through that, that I was used by Satan to deceive people. Now, I want you to understand these. During each of these things that I did, you know, false visions, false words of knowledge, false prophecies, all this manipulation God told me, God showed me. I never once used scripture. It was all about what I felt or what I thought or what popped into my head. That's what it was about. And that's what the charismatic church is all about. Trust me, I was in the charismatic church for almost 25 years and it was all about God showed me or I feel this or I think God, I hear God saying this. Did any person in the Bible ever say, I think I hear God saying this? <laughs> no, but that's what we did. We would never really open our Bibles and study it. It was, it was, it was all feeling, emotionalism. That's what the charismatic church is. That's why the charismatic church is evil and dangerous and deceptive. The NAR, same thing. That whole movement is corrupt and ungodly. And plus, what I was doing and what the, the charismatic church is doing is hurting people. And I hurt people. And I deceived a lot of people. But finally, it hit home and affected me. And I want to share with you this story. So I hope you'll stay with me because this is a story of what happened and it affected me. It came back to bite me in the rear. Are you ready? So numbers of years ago, I started having these stomach aches and they weren't just normal like, hey, I ate something bad, but they were really starting to affect my daily life. They hurt a lot. And it wasn't just for an hour, two hours, but it would be like half a day, all day, all night. And they kept getting worse. So I began to try things as a false prophet, as a self-deceived person, I did everything in my own strength. I would decree and declare, you know, I decree that thing gone. I declare that I am healed in Jesus name. I even used that magic formula in Jesus name. You know, I would walk around the house and around the backyard with my hand on my stomach. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. In the name of Jesus, I command my healing to come. Again, like I was summoning, Holy Spirit, activate. <laughs> what was I doing? I was so deceived. But again, I thought I was the mighty man of God. And according to Proverbs 18, 21, which I twisted, you know, life and death are in the power of the tongue. It was all about me. I had these mighty powers and this mighty words. And I could speak it into existence. Romans 4, 17. The problem is, is I didn't know God's word and I didn't know the author of scripture, God himself. Again, I was my own God. Did you notice that? I could speak the healing. I could command it to go. I had all this power. I was lost and I was blind. And it's embarrassing to even admit that years later. The problem was, is I didn't seek out any help. Well, it kept getting worse and worse. And now I'm crying myself to sleep. I was having absolute tons and tons of pain. Constipated sometimes for a week at a time. Not knowing what's going on. All these things that I'm trying to my own strength, no. So I went to see two specialists. And they finally said I had IBS with constipation, which I didn't even know what that was. And here's the thing is, I was so deceived, I rejected their reports. I said, what do you know? I'm, I'm a prophet. I'm a bona fide prophet of God. And I can, I can command that I have power. I can tell that thing to go and it's going to go. That's how lost and deceived I was. And remember, all of this did zero, nothing. And then finally, Jesus saved me. And it turned my life around. Now, did I get healed? No, I didn't. My soul was saved. My sins were forgiven. I began to mourn over my deception the pain and things that I had done to people, the lies, evilness of my heart. I was so wretched. The blinders came off and I saw who I really had been. And I mourned over that. I repented. I cried out to the Lord, asked him to forgive me and then asked him for mercy to save me. And he did. His grace and mercy saved me. Nothing I did. I didn't deserve it, but he did. He saved me. Then I began to see the truth of his word. I was so hungry for his word. I wanted to know the truth because I'd been under lies for so long. And it was amazing when I came across Philippians 129. 
It says that God has granted for us to believe in him and to suffer for his name. I was like, suffer? Suffering's a good thing? Suffering's a gift? And I know that sounds crazy. And some of you are like, wait a second, what? Hold on, just keep waiting for the end of the story. So fast forward a few years, I'm still dealing with this, this pain. I'm still in agony. I'm still a miserable person because of this. I mean, my attitude was miserable because I'm, I, I have the joy of the Lord, but I've got this intense pain. You know, I'm suffering almost like Paul did in second Corinthians 12. Well, finally, the Lord in his mercy did something amazing. So my wife and I decided to go to a home group at church, one of the Bible says, and I drug my feet because I didn't want to go. You know, I mean, I was, I was fine doing stuff my own way at home. And, you know, I was like, ah, I don't really like these people and all this. I, I had all these excuses. So I went and we got involved months into that. Our leader who was dealing with allergies and I was dealing with allergies at the same time. He's like, he took me aside and says, Jordan, you should go see my specialist. So I did, even though I don't like doctors and I'm not a pill popper and all this stuff. And I did. And he, he was looking through all the different things. He looked at my throat. He says, I think you, you struggle from um, acid reflux. You should take some Nexium. And I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. But I was like, okay. So I went to Costco and got a big jumbo size of Nexium. And I came home and started taking it. Trusting the Lord, continue to follow Jesus. Remember, this is the new Jordan, not the self-deceived false prophet. And about four to five days later, I started noticing all of a sudden my stomach ache was gone. And I'm like, I didn't change anything. Well, about two weeks later, almost everything was back to normal. No constipation, no pain. Everything was back to normal. So I went to see my primary care doctor and he confirmed it. He's like, yes, there are studies that show that these two are related. And I'm like, what? How did I never know this? How did I not see this through these big specialists years ago? And it was amazing. God began to heal me. And it has been over three years since I've had a stomach ache, since I've been constipated. It is amazing. I know that's a lot of TMI right now, but God did an amazing work. And why did he do that? You have to know this because the old me who was self-deceived and lost, if I would have spoken some kind of healing over me, guess what I would have done? Good job, Jordan. Way to go. You did it. I would have taken the credit. I would have gotten the glory. And the Bible says that God will share his glory with no person. And so as God healed me in his way and his time, he had to humble me, get my eyes on Christ. It was amazing because when he healed me, he got all the glory. He got all the credit. And my testimony is to glorify him, not me. I was the one that was deceived. I was the one that was, was so lost. And the Lord who is rich in mercy, Ephesians 2 verses 4 and 5, lavished his mercy on a wretched sinner like Jordan. And please understand that healing is nowhere guaranteed in the Bible. Please don't hear that today that, that you can just all of a sudden come to Jesus and you're going to be healed. No, you might not be healed until you get to heaven. But the, the amazing thing you have to know is that Jesus promised he would never leave you and never forsake you ever. When you are in Christ, you are his forever. So please understand from this testimony video, I was a self-deceived, rotten, evil, false prophet who hurt many people, which I am ashamed and I'm broken and I mourn over that deception. The Lord has forgiven me. He's healed me. He's saved me and he's taught me his word. And now I get to share it with whoever, whoever will listen for the rest of my life.